Hey guys, I am back here with another Worship Tech makeover. And if you saw the other video, maybe you did in August of 2022, I was able to visit uh, a student of ours and we really spent that time making the most of what he had with what was there. But while we were there and after, we made a plan for what the next steps were. And that was buying some equipment to, to update some of the stuff that he had and he invited me back to come make sure that it was installed properly and that all of the T's were crossed and I's were dotted uh, for the first Sunday that that new equipment was implemented. So I had a great time helping Josh out the first video that we made about that at Hilton Head Presbyterian Church. And now I'm showing you what we did on our second trip after new equipment was bought. Josh's goal in joining Worship Ministry School was to make systems that were simple, that were of high quality and reliable, that he won't have to replace in a couple years and make sure that they're volunteer friendly as well. So we put together some systems that I'm gonna share with you now. He had a two week window where he didn't have any services. They were doing an outdoor service on a particular Sunday. Uh, after a service on a Sunday, he tore equipment out and started running cables. And then the second week I showed up and we made sure that everything was installed. We spent a lot of time working ahead on this project. So I had a multi-track of his band and a service and I was able to mix the entire service through the SQ5 next to my desk. We were able to plan out a lot of details, make sure that all the, the cables and converters and all the little details would be taken care of so that we could make the most of the four days that I was there. And the tool that we used to collaborate on this is Notion. I have not used Notion a lot until the last month or two. Josh was familiar with it and we were really able to make a lot of progress before I got there and easily collaborate. So this is the page that we used for Notion. We had a bunch of tasks. Once you checked it off, it went to the completed. So you can see all of the things that we did and we were able to make notes on. So, okay, we need to copy over the iMac over to the Mac Mini and we were able to chat about that. Uh, he was able to make sure that the drum kit was set up. We had some tags as far as if this needed to happen before I got there or after I got there. Uh, who it would be assigned to, if it would be something that I would have to do or Josh could do, if we needed the lift for it or not. So we were able to batch those tasks together that we needed the lift for, uh, due date, URLs. So this was a really handy tool in figuring out what it was that we needed to do and the time frame for it because it is a really large project. And one of the things that was a little intimidating was the fact that there were so many little details to kick, take care of. So. Using Notion helped us take it off of our brains and put it onto paper and organize it in a way that would make it really easy to make sure that all the details were taken care of. So I just wanted to share with you that because without this, we would have had a lot more problems when I showed up realizing that we were missing things that we would need to accomplish all of the tasks. One of my favorite things about this was the audio side of it. We replaced a Soundcraft console with a SQ5 from Allen and Heath, and we also got stage boxes. We put an expander on stage next to the drum so that we just need to run a single ethernet cable to that expander and all of the drums plug right into it instead of needing to go through a stage floor pocket to the side stage. We also have ME500s for in-ears, which really cleaned up and simplified the process for the volunteers to mix their own in-ears. And because I have an Allen & Heath SQ5 in my home, I was able to take a multi-track recording of his service and fully process it. So I've got all of the routing done ahead of time. I've got all of the mixing done so that the front of house mix was done as well as the broadcast mix. And we were able to just drop in the file, the scene file to that new SQ5 and then start playing stuff through it and everything worked as it should have and sounded great. Another really cool thing about the way that we're doing audio at Hilton Head Presbyterian is the SQ5 is doing a matrix mix for the live stream. So it's very set it and forget it. If you turn up a vocal, it turns it up in the live stream etc. But we're running it into a UA audio, a universal audio Apollo interface. So we're going to need an interface anyway. So I recommended getting this nicer interface that has zero latency plugins on it 
really high quality, and I actually have one at my desk that you're listening to right now. I've got a microphone plugged into it. So at Hilton Head Presbyterian, we're running XLRs out of the SQ5 into the Apollo interface, and then the Apollo interface is applying a mastering chain of compression and EQ and limiting, and we're able to get a really full, clean, loud signal out of the matrix mix into ProPresenter where the live streaming is actually being encoded. Another volunteer friendly thing that we took care of for Josh with audio is making sure that on the surface of the SQ5, there is a button to just record and stop recording onto the flash drive so that they can have that file for a sermon podcast. Another big concern for Josh was the lighting in the room. And previously there is a laptop, a PC laptop, the screen was bent, you couldn't even close it all the way, and it was running a software that he did never heard of, didn't know how to use. He was able to pull all of the DMX addresses out of it so that I could, again, from home, open up LightKey and start to program the lights. And then while we were there, we had the lift, so we were able to completely re-aim the lights as well and use them in a much better way. Before I got there and while I was there, I was really fortunate to be able to call up Frank from Pro Church Lights and get advice on the fly as I was there, making sure that we were going down the right path and putting things in the right place. Also ahead of time, Josh ordered the Wall Panel Pro, again, uh, using that to make sure that it's a volunteer-friendly system. Someone can just walk in and touch a button and have the lights be a certain scene that they need it for without having to walk over to the computer and open up light key or hit the button on the stream deck because we also have a stream deck that is triggering all of the lights as well. In reusing the lights and re-aiming them, there were previously a lot of colored lights pointed at the faces of the people on stage. Sometimes there was a scene that would be like a crazy color that would be lighting everyone's faces, so it didn't really look great on video or in person, and we reused all of those lights to light the stage instead, so we were able to uh, reuse those lights and not have to buy any lights. The only thing that we bought was a converter to go from USB to DMX for light key to work. On the video and broadcast side of things, by the time that I left on the first trip that I was there, we were already streaming through ProPresenter, but this time we switched it to BoxCast, so we're taking a feed out of the ProPresenter computer, going into BoxCast, and then streaming from there. So now, again, volunteer friendly. His volunteers don't need to worry about starting and stopping the live stream. It happens automatically. Also on the video side of things, uh, previously all of the projectors and TVs were receiving a signal over HD base T. So it was a HDMI cable coming out of a computer through a converter into uh, HDMI into the converter that goes to network and then network to HDMI again. So there's a lot of conversions there that we're also just using the Apple native display, which can be unreliable and not work as smoothly as something like the Decklink Duo. So we installed the Decklink Duo and made sure that all of those cable runs were done properly. And now all of his projectors and TVs are receiving an SDI signal as well. I have a lot of favorite things from this trip I'm realizing as I'm recording this video. Uh, two more for you. One of them is the drum kit that he bought. He bought a Joey Paris drum kit, so the drummer of Shane and Shane and Worship Initiative builds drum kits, and he built this beautiful drum kit that is designed for smaller churches or places that don't want to have a loud drum kit, but with a little bit of EQ and compression work, you can make it sound as big as you want, but in the room, it's going to be quiet. So. He bought that drum kit and set it up and got some really nice microphones for it like MD-421s for the toms and Earthworks for the overheads and uh, really just made sure that this drum kit was set up properly. Uh, the way that it came, it sounded great, so we just made sure that the mics were placed properly and got some initial sounds out of it, but I think that he's going to really love having this drum kit and the way that it sounds is is really nice. So make sure you check out the Joey Parrish drum kits if you want to hear some examples of that. And then lastly, if you check out the previous video, or maybe we'll have some b-roll here of the original front of house table, it was a lot of old weird furniture that took up a ton of space, and Josh was able to replace it with a really clean single tabletop 
where we just placed the mixer on top of and we placed the keyboard and mouse and monitor for ProPresenter on top of, and then we put a lot of stuff in the rack below front of house so that it was off the table and out of the way. And it's also at a standing desk height, so if you're mixing or if you're doing ProPresenter, you can be standing and seeing over the congregation. We also tilted the monitor. This is one of my favorite little tricks is taking the stand off of the monitor and then flipping it upside down and leaning it uh, against or putting it on a VESA mount so that you can have it lower and the operator for ProPresenter can actually see over it and see the congregation and see what's happening in the room. Um, it just makes it a lot easier to operate and, and engage in the service. That's another one of my favorite things is how clean this table and this front of house setup turned out. A lot of great things happened on this trip. We were able to accomplish a ton, but as always, I learned some things along the way and I think it's important that anytime that you're doing a project, anytime you're doing something new, to take some notes of the things that you learned on this project so you can be better at it next time. So I wanna share with you a few of the things that I learned on this trip. One of them is that the standing height for the booth is really great, but we need rolling chairs. Uh, the chairs that are there are really cool looking and comfortable and sleek, but because they don't roll, if you are mixing and you're sitting down and then you wanna go listen to the mix outside of the tech booth or help the person doing ProPresenter uh, is just a little clunky. So one of those things that I learned is that having rolling chairs is really nice at your front of house booth and that I would opt for those over a chair that doesn't have wheels on it. And then some of the snags that we run into were like the lift we didn't know how to operate and needed some help figuring that out. Uh, the integrators that pulled the cable pulled the wrong cable and they didn't terminate them properly so we just had to to fix that and that wasn't something that I was expecting when I arrived. The way that you have to respond to those is just be calm and figure out the next step and uh, follow through with it instead of getting upset or giving up. Uh, when you run into things like that you just need to be able to figure out okay how do we fix this and if it takes time for something to get ordered, I need to move on and do something else in the meantime so we don't waste time waiting around for something or someone to come along and fix it. Another little snag that we ran into was in ProPresenter, we're sending the signal from SDI to the nursing mother's room or to the lobby, and we weren't getting that signal uh, or we weren't getting audio to that spot. And I remembered something from the last time I ran into an issue, and it was this little checkbox here in the audio preferences of ProPresenter. You need to check this enable NDI and SDI so that audio can go out on NDI and SDI. And then in the routing of that, you have to be on this vertical plane. So in the setup that we were doing for Josh, we were using channels uh, one and two uh, to go out but the ProPresenter channel that we're using for the, the console mix was seven and eight. So instead of being on this horizontal plane, we had to be on this vertical plane. So the ProPresenter channel one, two, as well as seven, eight are being sent out, but it's going out on audio channels one through two. SDI has 16 channels of audio. So uh, that was just one thing that we ran into that might help you if you end up doing a similar setup. All in all, I loved working with Josh, being able to visit once, see what was going on, make the most of it, and then make a plan for what was next, and then actually come and help install it and see it all come together and be there for a service with all the new equipment, see how the volunteers were excited for the new soundboard and how it was laid out and how simple and clean it was to operate the equipment for a Sunday morning and removing distractions, uh, as well as hear from the congregation how they appreciated the new lighting or um, the way that it sounded, and also being able to hear and see the improvements on the live stream itself. The reason that it all worked so well is because Josh was driven to make these improvements, was willing to put the work in and work together with me so that we could accomplish all of this stuff. If you're interested in accomplishing things like Josh did, you can check out the link in the description for joining Worship Ministry School. I would love to come help you and your ministry. And let us know in the comments, what have you done recently or what are you currently working on to simplify or improve the systems in your ministry? Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.